I'm Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Monday, January 19th. It's a national day of remembrance for Martin Luther King Jr., the great civil rights leader. In Arkansas, it's also a day of remembrance to Robert E. Lee, the famous uh, Confederate war general. That's because of a Faustian bargain struck by the legislature many years ago when some didn't want to honor King at all. We're a little bit past that, but not enough to still have a dual ceremony that still prompts national commentary on websites about this weird practice we have here of honoring two seemingly disparate leaders. Uh, Governor Asa Hutchinson joined the ML King Jr. Commission's Day of Service in Benton today. He was also there with Attorney General Leslie Rutledge. Asa Hutchinson said good words and talked about people making difficult decisions. I think it is a time to remind the Republican Party of some difficult decisions it could make. It could stop rolling back voter right gains done by Dr. King. It could uh, include poor people in Asa Hutchinson's call for an income tax increase. And Attorney General Rutledge perhaps should no longer forward uh, racist-tinged emails written in Ebonics, as she once did when she worked at the Department of Human Services. We can all learn lessons from Dr. King going forward. The big news this week will be Thursday. Governor Hutchinson is finally going to talk about what he intends to do about health care. I haven't yet seen anybody who says they believe the governor will say we're not going to continue the private option. I think we'll rename it, we'll reshape it, we'll call it a conservative, marketed-based improvement on the existing system. It might still be difficult for Republicans to pass. We've uh, posted today a story by David Ramsey for the New Republic, our former writer, about how when Republican governors do adopt the private option and adopt it in a way that makes it more palatable to conservatives. They add layers of bureaucracy and they make it more expensive. Not such a great thing. Uh, the governor made news over the weekend as well by leading the uh, <clears throat> annual march against abortion. They call it the, the March for Life that culminates the capital steps. All the top Republican officials participated. I think it was interesting that this occurred at the same time a group of Republican legislators, women legislators, in Congress said that they think that Republican Party should hold back on a national bill to put a 20-week abortion ban. It contains some things that are really punitive to women. For example, that, that requires women to, to file a police report if they're going to claim a rape exception to the abortion rule. There's some things that we're not seeing in Arkansas. It's a pretty uniform thing here, but there, there still remains support for abortion rights in Arkansas. Polling shows a majority here still wants to keep it legal. There'll be a march for reproductive freedom next weekend, perhaps not as large in numbers as the Republicans, but it'll remind people that it's not a single-minded view of that issue in Arkansas. News still uh, <clears throat> on the Supreme Court and judicial elections. The U.S. Supreme Court tomorrow is going to decide whether or not it's a violation of First Amendment rights to say that candidates for judgeships in states that elect them may not directly solicit money. It certainly lends an unpleasant appearance to races when judges raise money. Arkansas is one of the states that prohibits judicial candidates from making direct solicitation. We got a little idea this year if we didn't already know how well that works, of course, because Mike Maggio, who's running for Court of Appeals, has pleaded guilty to uh, making a judicial decision in return for some significant campaign contributions. Now, he didn't directly solicit the money, but an intermediary, if his did, then the judge was fully aware of where the money was coming from. So I, I think the problem really is more about elections of judges than free speech, but that's where we are. By the way, that big contributor to Mike Maggio was a nursing home owner named Michael Morton from Fort Smith. The Democrat Gazette expanded on a lot of reporting we've done over the weekend and tallied up a figure of $1.2 million Morton has given to various state-level races over the last few years, heavily invested in judicial races and the Office of Attorney General now held by Leslie Rutledge. I added this morning that he's given another maybe quarter of a million dollars in federal races. A million and a half dollars, we can conclude this much Straight or not straight, nursing homes make a lot of money for somebody. Uh, the Arkansas Public Law Center presented its presentation last Friday to the Independent Citizens Commission that is looking at legislative pay raises. We were more generous uh, than perhaps some expected. We said, let's pay the le legislators $30,000 a year. That's almost 100% pay raise, but let's not let them charge for per diem on days they don't go to work. Let's make them submit itemized expense accounts as people in private business do and let's stop the nepotistic practice of, of sending pay supplements to spouses under the guise that they're doing work for their legislative office. It's just a bogus pay supplement, no more or less. Uh, the U.S. Supreme Court, after we taped my last show on Friday, decided it would take up and resolve once and for all the question of whether states may ban marriages between same-sex partners in, 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 a, in a couple. Uh, this could finally resolve, 
resolve even for Arkansas what's going to happen on marriage. We're still hopeful that there's going to be a decision from the Arkansas Supreme Court before the U.S. Supreme Court rules in June. There ought to be by rights. Uh, there's a state constitutional question that's been raised in the Arkansas lawsuit. It's time for the Arkansas Supreme Court to act. That's it on an otherwise slow ML King Day. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back Tuesday.